What do you see as the opportunities and the challenges ahead over the next 12 to 15 months? We are going to see um, build-to-rent uh, development project projects, large ones in the main cities coming to fruition. Um, that, that will be supported by equity from all over the globe. I think we'll find the Southeast Asian, Middle Eastern money will tend to focus on London. We're looking at the regions, um, and um, I, think, I think what we will see, we'll start to see, begin to see UK institutions coming into that market. Europe is being evacuated, as we speak, by anybody who's prime age and professional. Dentists and doctors and lawyers, accountants and surveyors, and one of the countries they're coming to is the UK and they need somewhere to work and to live. It, we, we've never had a demographic profile like this. And so I'd say don't be distracted by political uncertainty because it's a bit like Y2K. You can become so obsessed you can't see the wood for the trees. China is the real deal. It can grow at 7% because it has enough instruments at its disposal in Beijing, monetarily and fiscally. And we, we are basically the single biggest overseas hub for, the, for Asia. We, are alongside, we nestle alongside Europe. We may be of Europe geographically, but where we may as be on the moon for all the impact Europe will have on us neg negatively. So it's a, I'm, not, I'm, not some, I'm not being evangelical about the UK. I'm, I'm naturally pessimistic. But you, you've got, a, you've got a, uh, the context, and it would be quite funny if it wasn't so serious. The worse Europe gets, the better the UK performs because of evacuation of capital and of people. And those of you who have invested in a European recovery, I very much hope you're better at cards. Many of the cities I, I visit around the UK talk about um, the shortage of stock being a big, big challenge there. Is that one of the constraints on your clients? Well, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? Because the shortage of stock is precisely what's driven, if you like, the, the thirst and the demand. There are various reasons why the UK, but London in particular, remain appealing. And the fact that there isn't enough stock in London means necessarily that you're going to drive a move towards investment outside of London, which can only be a good thing. So whilst it's a challenge, actually, the flip side is you've seen, we've seen this year particularly investment going out into other cities. What's interesting is the way that investment has moved. So there's a lot of activity in, in cities like Birmingham, Leeds and Manchester. But it's been <clears throat> a lot slower in some of the other traditionally good cities for real estate, like Bristol, for example. So, I mean, it is a challenge, certainly, but one that I think will become a benefit for us because it will necessarily drive investment out. And that combined with the government's commitment to building infrastructure such that we can actually link our cities up better is bound to have a, a positive effect. Technology is very interesting, I think, because mm. you know, in, in the residential sector, um, one of the real barriers to institutions coming into that market has been about the inefficiencies of managing uh, the product. And you know, technology will help, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, improve those, uh, those efficiencies and obviously have a big impact on the returns that come into the investors. And, and, you know, it's got a very important part to play, actually, I think, uh, mm. uh, 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 certainly in the residential field. The part of the industry that I look at are the services that enable the uh, commercial and resi residential transactions to take place. And we've increasingly been seeing a digitization of those services. And I think Zoopla's flotation for near nearly a billion pounds after just six years of formation is a classic example of that. We've taken a longer term view on this trend and set up a platform in East London where we believe we'd like to have the property and technology industries come together. We're, we're calling it Property Innovation Labs or Pi Labs and it's in partnership with uh, Cushman and Wakefield. And since we made the launch announcement last week, we've had an incredible and slightly shocking response from the property industry themselves where th they're coming forward and saying, we don't want that type of innovation to pass us by again and for the next five years rather than us uh, watching from the sidelines would very much like to invest in that innovation so we thought that we'd just have the tech investors behind us but now we're finding property companies would like to also take part in the future of their own industry which is very encouraging